What started your process off at Inc? How did that play kind of evolve and where did it come from? It came from the story. I've always been interested in, um, in Fleet Street and the history of newspapers and, and charting that journey and how that evolves. But actually it was a story um, I discovered about five, ten years ago of, the, of this rivalry on Fleet Street between The Sun, after Rupert Murdoch bought it and turned it into a tabloid, and The Mirror newspaper, which was at the time the best-selling paper in, in Britain. And I heard all these stories from news articles, books, um, about this civil war that broke out between two different competing ideas, really, um, a more modern version of tabloid populism and a more old-fashioned, um, almost Rethian uh, view of, of the news being there to educate as well as entertain. Uh, and then I started investigating the personalities, obviously Rupert Murdoch, who I was fascinated by, a guy I think most people have never heard of, Larry Lamb, who was the first editor of the paper, and the journey he went on emotionally to discover that, that voice. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I guess I always just love immersing myself in, in periods and in worlds and, and, and getting, as you know, Bunny Christie, who's designed this set, um, it's a thrill for me to come on here and see, uh, to, to see, see someone realise this, this period, 1969, in such a vivid way. It's cool. Is there something about real stories that you're drawn to? A couple of your previous plays as well have kind of come back to periods from British history. Is there something that really attracts you to going back to those eras? Yeah, I, I love real stories. I, I love... Um, I love post-war British history, I don't know why, but I think there were so many great stories to go back to uh, and to use those stories to make sense of what's happening now. Mm -hmm. So I've been interested in it for a couple of years in, um, in the news and how, the, how it's affecting our national conversation and how the news is changing with social media. And um, in the past year with Brexit and Trump, how there's a certain populist voice that's returned to, to the news. So I've been interested in that. But yes, I love history. I love, um, I love the process of researching uh, historical events, meeting, interviewing people from the past, and finding my way structurally and narratively through that these periods is great fun. Were you surprised when you were doing that research on how some of those populist elements really were really relevant to uh, kind of issues going on today? Yeah, the I mean, they, they were they they had the same uh, debates and conversations back in the late sixties that we're having now about the function of the news and who it's for, um, and how you should balance entertainment and power and punch with integrity and with truth. Um, but also, of course, you, as a, I guess, as a writer and as a, as a creative team generally, you try and, you know, fashion, uh, fashion the period to ask those questions now. So that if, even if they're not immediately evident in the in the facts and in the, in the real story, you can highlight certain aspects of it to make sure that those conversations are being being had in the play. Mm. And as a writer, did you start off with this idea? Right, I want to write about Fleet Street in the '60s, about Rupert Murdoch buying the Sun and do research as you went along, or did you sort of do a whole batch of research and then write the play? How was that yes. writing process for you? That's a really good question. I, I think I change every time, but normally, generally speaking, I try not to just do an intense period of research and then start writing, because I think you have to protect yourself and your play from arriving at, with it to page one with, with too much information, with too much um, interesting detail and facts to you, but might not immediately translate into the play. So I, 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 I probably had about two, three weeks of intense research uh, based on memoirs, interviews, documents, and then I started structuring, I started plotting and writing. And uh, then through that writing process, you start to reveal um, gaps in your, in your knowledge that you can then go back and keep the research process going. So it's, it's a continued, continual process. And actually, uh, even this week, we're in, we're in previews, um, and I was still researching stuff uh, with, with the director, Rupert, and with everyone else. Uh, I sent it off to some um, Fleet Street people who were around at the time and got them to check certain facts. We've had audience members coming in, feeding back some little details that I may have got wrong or, or an idea to, to punch up the, um, the detail or the terminology a little bit. So yeah, even, even yesterday we added in some new terminology um, a few hours before press night just to, just to add to the authenticity so it never stops. And is that structuring as you go along and add more research and add more facts and details of the time, is that a conscious decision where the play restructures or does it sort of just happen naturally as you're writing? I, mean, I, I think different writers might um, work differently, but I really, I, I take a draft into the day one of the rehearsal, always knowing it's, it's not the finished article. Uh, and even sometimes, it's not even, even close actually, I, I rewrote most of Act 2 in the second week of rehearsal for this play. Um, and so you need a company of actors who are up for that challenge, um, a director uh, who's a great dramaturg and can help you on that process. So in terms of, um, yeah, in terms of anything, whether it be 
narrative, character, thematic, emotional, that's constantly evolving, and, and yes, yeah, so is the research side of things. So I'm open to being a sponge for four, five, six weeks uh, from the first day of rehearsal through to opening night. Obviously, it requires, um, uh, you've got to have a bit of a, not stubbornness, you've got to protect uh, what fascinates you about the play and why you're writing it. So there is, of course, a cut-off point where you have to go, I've heard all points of view, that's brilliant, thank you very much, but I think we're going to go with this version yeah. because that's what speaks to me and that's why we're doing it. But um, I, I see it as a, as a collaboration between actors, creatives, technicians, myself, and, of course, the audience when they come in. Yeah. Keeping that story really at heart of the yeah, entire process. Yeah, I'm a big believer in, and in, in, I don't know, not everyone thinks this, and I could be wrong, but I, I sort of passionately believe that story is the driving vehicle for everything. And I think we sometimes associate plot and narrative and story with TV or with film. Um, but I'm a, I, I'm a big believer uh, that we can apply those rules on, on stage more and tell bigger stories and, and hang everything, um, part of the politics, the message, the themes, the ideas, the questions, I believe you should be hanging that off off the story and of what the characters are dealing with and, and cause and effect. How do people react to a situation and how does that speak to what it's like to be a journalist having an ethical dilemma about whether you want a story or not. But yeah, so for me, it's, it's story, story, story. What do you think it is about theatre that allows you to really interrogate and ask those questions that perhaps other media forms can't or do differently? Theatre's great for that, I think, because it gives you the space. Mm. Not just in terms of actual time, but it, I mean that's one aspect. Uh, this play is, is just over two and a half hours long, uh, although hopefully it doesn't feel that way. Um, so you have the stage time, you have the time to sit there as an audience member, quietly in the dark with no other distractions. You're not watching something on your computer, half texting and tweeting. Um, you're not walking in and out of the room, half watching a TV uh, drama. It's an intense period where you where you uh, uniquely engage with something for a, for a significant period of time. Uh, and it's live, you're in a room of people who are also reacting and responding to, to the story. So I think theatre is uniquely placed to deal with um, complex issues in a, in a more nuanced way than maybe other art forms. And that story, obviously, this is based on reality and real people and real characters. How do you find writing for real people as opposed to you know, making up fictional characters? Is there a difference in your approach there? Not really. It's, it's both easier and harder to write real people. Obviously, it's easier in one aspect... Um, because you can hit the ground running in terms of biographical detail. You're not just arbitrarily coming up with backstory or, or um, character traits. You arrive uh, with a certain amount of information that can just means that you can start quicker. Um, but that said, then there are, of course, challenges because you need your characters to perform a specific function in your play. And if, that, um, if the real-life uh, biographical details are... are are restricting you there or you feel like you're pushing at the sides of, of reality when really you want to fictionalise it more, you, um, that's when it gets tricky. But you have to make decisions and you just have to make uh, creative decisions on what, uh, what you can push, what you can exaggerate, what you can uh, take artistic licence on. And I'm a, I'm a big believer that audiences aren't stupid, they're, they're very sophisticated and they know that this is a fictionalised representation. It's not a, it's not a factual presentation of anything. Mm -hmm. So you, you, have, you have scope. I mean, we always have to put that, I sort of hate it, that stupid thing in, at the front of any TV drama, movie or play when it's based on real life, that this mm -hmm. is a drama and no, 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 some things have been changed. Which I think is so stupid, everyone knows that. But, uh, you know, we have to protect ourselves and the story. Um, uh, but, uh, yes, I, I, I love... I love I love uh, the research side to, to understanding real people, going to meet people who knew them, relatives, work colleagues, um, because I think reality will always be more interesting than anything you can make up. Do you find it quite a challenge to almost take away your assumptions about these people? You know, people will have assumptions about Rupert Murdoch, for example. Yeah, of course. And so do you find it a challenge to kind of humanise the character and not go to one side or go to another side of an argument? I th personally, I think it's my job to humanise yeah. these people, even people we strongly disagree with or people, we, as you say, we might come with a huge amount of baggage or prejudice or assumptions about someone, especially someone um, like Rupert Murdoch or a newspaper like The Sun. And the, the very understandable, people sometimes have very personal, visceral reasons for, for disliking that paper or for liking that paper. Um, so I do think it's my job and I enjoy uh, this, the side of the, uh, the work which... Um, 
plays devil's advocate with that and, and, and tries to come at things at a, at a weird angle or come at people from a different angle. And of course, ultimately, you know, someone can absolutely and probably should write a play that really goes hard for Murdoch and, um, and calls him to account. Um, that's never going to be my play. I have more interest in trying to understand what motivates him, uh, his vulnerabilities, his weaknesses, his flaws, his strengths even. Uh, that to me is what excites me as a, as a writer. Do you self-edit when you're going along, you know, maybe, oh, this is a bit too... I mean, always you, I, I, always you were when you're rewriting and rewriting 10, yeah. 15, 20 drafts, you're constantly combing through it to work out what your argument is, what you, what you feel about the subject matter. And then you've got you to trust the people around you. I trust um, Rupert Gould, who is an incredible dramaturg. He knows how plays work and he knows how to punch them up and make them even better. So I trust people's perspective like that if they say, I think you're being a bit soft on them here or I think you're being too hard. Uh, yeah, you've got to trust the people around you. And I guess with any creative, it's sometimes hard to lose those things you really like. Like, oh, I know I really should yeah. get rid of this line, yeah. but I really like it. It's, yeah, it's, you know, it's the famous Noel Coward thing about you've got to kill your babies. And sometimes you cut or lose some of your favourite moments or lines in the play. Uh, I, I'm unapologetic that I'm a bit of a, a gag fiend and I do enjoy uh, comedy. I do enjoy... Um, making people laugh because in, because I think inherent in that if you're making people laugh then it's because you've you've, you've hit on something that's truthful or that people recognise to be true so I, I you know I love we try to put as much humour in this play as possible uh, and it's very hard sometimes uh, to lose um, to lose things you know will get a, a nice response or that an actor's playing incredibly well but it it uh, it's either not not your story, it's distracting from the central narrative or the central themes, or it's inconsistent with the character. So yes, it's um, it's you know, it's playwright playwriting can be really brutal and it's really hard. Um, but again, you just have to trust your judgment and judge the judgment of people around you. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Great.